Rory Stewart is here. Rory, you famously left the Conservative Party. You felt the Conservative Party had left you. You are not a natural enthusiast for this party any longer. And yet, if I read out your first tweet this morning, you say, a much more confident speech than many were expecting. She has drawn clear political lines on EU, immigration, tax and defence and defined her opponents. Whatever we think of the content, you can clearly see here why Liz Truss won over Conservative Party members. Explain. <laughs> so, um, one of the things that she did well, like obviously what I said there was whatever we think of the content. Um, it's not my type of conservative politics. And I have very different views from this trust on immigration and economic policy. But it's something that will be deeply appealing to the Conservative Party members that put her in. And it's not a speech that you would have heard from David Cameron or Theresa May or Boris Johnson. It was a more ideological speech. It was a speech mm. that was putting an enormous amount of emphasis on the magical power in her mind that cutting taxes can have on growth. It was making a big play on Brexit and the EU and ripping up European regulations. And all of that stuff will be real red meat to her conservative mm. party base. Rory. Is that enough to win? That, that is absolutely the question. But Rory, I wonder if we can admire this much, at least, that this is now a proper, old-fashioned, ideological fight, a slugfest between ideas from the right and ideas from the centre and the centre-left, fighting it out, in a way that we haven't seen so clearly for a very long time. Yes, I'm worried, though, that it's part of a new style of politics. It's a sort of a form of populist politics, which is about polarisation. And as you say, it's about drawing very, very clear dividing lines. So a lot of that speech is, is having a go at, at people like me who do podcasts, so we're being characterised as the anti-growth mm. coalition. And there's a general sense that she's trying to stir up, that there's a sort of elite or establishment commentariat who are trying to bog us down in an old world and keep explaining mm. things too difficult. And she did that rather cunningly, I think, against Rishi Sunak in her leadership drive, where she managed to make him seem like a bit of a stiff shirt because he was making, I thought, quite sensible warning points about the fact that her policy might have negative impacts on the pound or on guilt or on inflation. But she was able, and this is the popular style, to portray herself curiously as the outsider, although, of course, she's been in government for 10 years been in government and is a relatively wealthy person living in a very, very expensive part of, in fact, South, not North, North London. Uh, let me ask you about one other aspect of this, which fascinates me, because you understand the Conservative family, but this growth, growth, growth emphasis, there are lots of aspects of Conservatism which, as it were, push against that. Uh, the Conservatives have come into contact, a conflict, I, I'm sorry, with the RSPB, the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds, and the National Trust over some of the plans to rip up environmental protections, for instance, in those enterprise zones. The Conservative Party is not really growth, growth, growth. It's growth, growth, conserve, protect. Yes. So certainly the traditional Conservative Party that I was proud to be part of was about prudence, it was about tradition, it was about love of country, it was about restraint, preserving what we loved most. And that means that there were many options for growth that we were against. So, for example, we passionately believe in protecting the Greenbelt. Theoretically, you could create more growth by building a lot of houses over the Greenbelt. That isn't something that a traditional Conservative like me would want to do. I think environmentalism is quite important to one strand of conservatism. I, I also think that it's true that she's going to run into a problem about immigration because she clearly thinks that immigration can bring growth. And of course, technically that's true. If you have a bigger population, your economy grows. That may not affect how much each individual gets, but your economy can grow that way. But of course, she's got a home secretary who doesn't want immigration. So at the heart of the problem, is that a lot of this talk about growth, which is a sort of vision of a kind of extreme Singapore on Thames, let's rip up the regulations. Mm. It may work. Be, it's not very conservative. Uh, to be fair to be fair to them, Suella Braverman doesn't want illegal or uncontrolled immigration. She may accept immigration. But just moving on, I think Liz Truss called one of her daughters Liberty. From what you're saying, do you think the Conservative Party should be renamed the Liberty Party or the Libertarian Party? Is that what they've really become? 
Yeah, I think she is on the sort of libertarian radical edge. She talks about Britain in a way that I don't really recognize the Britain that I know. It, it feels to me as though she's seeking comparisons with Singapore or maybe an enormous economy like the United States. And I think she's uh, being quite ideological. She's not taking into account the fact that we are a country which has chosen to make a lot of choices from workers' uh, protections through to environmental protection standards. Many of the things which Mm. she's sort of hinting are getting in the way of growth are actually quite precious to us and are things that make us proud to be British. And I think we're an important part of the One Nation tradition, the Conservative Party, which uh, is is suspicious of radical change. You're right, she's she's a radical. She's a libertarian radical. But the, the question is, and this is what she's gambling on, Politically, she's hoping that this can mobilize a particular radical right-wing base. She probably, if she was listening to this, think we don't need people like Rory. They're the problem and they're getting away from it. Yes. Well, we've needed people like Rory. We're very grateful to people like Rory. Thank you very much indeed.